How do you hack a television station, its 11 channels, as well as its website, Facebook, and Twitter accounts? The question on everyone's mind after Francophone news and entertainment station TV5 Monde fell prey to cyber attackers claiming allegiance to ISIS. Well, for the answer, three heads are better than one. We're joined by David Nakash, cryptologist who teaches at France's prestigious École Normale Supérieure. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, you've, brought, you've brought along two to, to uh, graduate students. Maybe you can introduce them for, yeah. to us. Uh, Huda Ferradi, who is one of my PhD students, and uh, Rémi Giraud, who is also a PhD student, both working on security, malware, cryptography, and this kind of things. So how do you hack uh, a, 11 TV channels, uh, a website, and the Facebook and Twitter account? OK, we looked into uh, this attack to understand uh, uh, what we can gather as information about, uh, uh, about what happened. Apparently, what happened here is that some malicious software uh, was, uh, was entered into uh, the TV channel. The way in which it entered is not clear yet. Probably it is someone who, uh, who clicked on a script which he shouldn't have done, receiving a fake email, um, or it was introduced by an insider, we still don't know. Uh, but once this software was executed on the, on the PC, it infected other PCs. So the hacker network. didn't have to physically be in the building? No, no, yeah. no, no. He didn't have to be physically in the building. He either sent an email that was executed by someone who was tempted into, tricked into validating it, uh, or it was introduced by some other way. So from what you've seen, how does it work exactly? Okay, you, you get an email. This email has an attachment. Uh, you, are, um, you are invited uh, to open the attachment or to click on the attachment. Once you do that, you launch a malicious software. This malicious software takes control of your, of your computer and from there hops again and again and again uh, and infects the entire information system. Right, but how does it hop from uh, the, TV, the TV station itself, uh, the website, and again, the social networking sites. Okay, it is sufficient that someone within the TV channel consults his uh, social network from a, a computer which is, uh, which is installed at work, and then what the malware can do is just spoof uh, the communication, uh, steal the passwords, and provides them uh, to an attacker who is outside. Is this sophisticated stuff, or is this easy to do? Uh, it depends. Uh, we can say that this is an average, average grade attack. An average grade attack. An average grade attack, yeah. So what does that say about our cyber defenses, if you will? Okay. Uh, Give it to us straight here. <laughs> okay, system, systems change very, very quickly. And as they change, uh, we have more and more threats coming in. And uh, these threats allow to do uh, quite, uh, quite extraordinary things uh, nowadays. All right. So, can you can you can you give us a demonstration? Yeah, of... probably Remy can uh, can show show yeah, it. Explain that. So, as as David mentioned, you just need at some point to have someone do something that is just out of the ordinary to get access to a computer. And most people think you actually have to do a lot for that to happen, but it is not the case. It suffices that you click on an attachment, it suffices that you go on certain websites and you wouldn't notice. So the little demonstration we've got here uh, on the computer, right, which uh, maybe can demonstrate. Is All right, yeah, come on over to this side here. Yeah. Is an example of what could happen. So what you see here, maybe you, you don't understand what you see uh, right now, but what you're seeing is essentially um, the motion going on in front of the computer. So if I move, if right. I move in front of it, I can detect it. Uh, this is just a web page. There is no magic involved. There is no camera involved. So I can put a sticker in front of it and I can still detect what's going on in the room around the computer. Right. This kind of thing I can do uh, at, at, from a remote location just using a website. So in other words, you can spy on what's going on in the room, Absolutely. even if there's no webcam, for instance, on Absolutely. the computer. Even, I, I would say, I don't even require a computer. I just require something that has the, well, for instance, a microphone that I could use in order to get access to that. Is, is this new stuff, or is this something that uh, spooks have been using for decades? Well, some have, certainly, I, su I suppose, although it's not very well known whether they have or not. 
But the point is, technology uh, uh, that we use every day, most people do not even realize uh, the potential applications it has. And the, the fact that you can, well, spy as I'm doing right now, or uh, use it to transfer data or information to several locations. So that might be one of the ways uh, someone got access to, uh, to TV5 um, internal computer systems. To the internal computer system. Huda, can you come closer to the microphone so we can hear you a second? No, you don't want to speak to us. All right, well, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask David then this question. David, if you could sit down yes, again, sir. please. The, 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 uh, the, um, uh, the way you explain it here, are you surprised that it happened or are you surprised that it hasn't happened before? No, no, I'm not surprised at all. As a matter of fact, we conducted other attacks uh, on which we did presentations uh, just, uh, just a month ago or so. I did a presentation uh, in, a, in a conference about uh, how we penetrated completely um, a firm, a huge firm, uh, operating in Singapore uh, by using something called the buffer overflow attack. We found a very small flow, and from this flow, we actually got to the entire information system. Uh, I think that the presentation is even on the web. So, no, these are things that can happen routinely. It is just that here the target is very visible. Here the target is very visible. Um, authorities saying they're making progress. They think the attack happened perhaps, according uh, to one source who spoke to a French radio station, from within French soil. But, of course, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter a lot. It doesn't matter a lot. When you launch those attacks, you can use tools that hide your traces, such as Tor, for instance, which uh, is a network that allow, allow people to, to route their communications in a way that they are not traceable. Um, it might be that someone did it from a cyber cafe. It is not relevant to the attack itself. When the attack happened, um, the, our, the, the people here who watch social networking told us that uh, the people at TV5 Monde sent out messages on Facebook and Twitter saying, how do we get in touch with you? We don't know how to reach you. It was late at night here in Paris. Uh, is, that a, is that a fault on the part of Facebook and Twitter? Should they have dedicated hotlines, or do they have them and TV5 didn't know about them? I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about this specific detail. I cannot answer. Uh, the only thing is that usually you try to, uh, to have alternate communication means uh, when, when things collapse. Uh, this is what we call the mystery attack. Sometimes you're attacked by a phenomenon that you don't understand. You just have to be able to regenerate security very quickly. This apparently didn't happen. F final final re uh, question for you. The, the Interior Minister says we're faced with determined terrorists and we're determined to fight them. There was nobody killed. Would you call this an act of terrorism? It is very difficult uh, for, uh, for information technology specialists uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to define it as an act of, te of terrorism. What, what, what is easy to say here is this is certainly illegal. Uh, I would qualify it as illegal. I'm myself a forensic expert by the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court in, French, in France. Uh, it, is, it is certainly illegal. Now, is it qualifiable as terrorism? I don't know. Does it, it spread fear? The... In your view, does it does it increase your fear? No, of course, sense? of course, it, it increases people's fear. If you if you did this on uh, on a on a nuclear power station, uh, you can imagine the consequences. Mm. Well, David Nakesh, I want to thank you, David Nakesh, cryptologist, who teaches at the École Normale Supérieure. I want to thank as well Rémi Giraud and uh, as well uh, Huda Ferrari, who uh, who who helped you out or helped working on this uh, with you. Thank you for being with us here. Stay with us. There's more to come here on France 24.